det var i 2001 at jeg var på seiltur, så tenkte jeg at her, her står det et vindmølletårn. Men hvis jeg hadde klart å lage det 100 meter høyt og sette en vindmølle på toppen og balansert det, så måtte vi kunne klare å lage offshore vindkraft. Så ble vi veldig opptatt av at dette var løsningen jeg tegnet, og vi tok det med videre. Sixteen years later, an idea on a napkin has turned into five gigantic floating wind turbines off the coast of Scotland. The world's first floating wind farm. To prove the concept of floating wind turbines, we first built a full-scale demo version of the Norwegian west coast. It was a lot of skepticism back in those days, but we have proven them wrong. The Hyvind demo has been producing better than expected and given us valuable information for the further development of the Hyvind concept. Offshore wind is a perfect match for a company with long experience and knowledge about developing and operating offshore facilities. Floating turbines can open up new markets. We can go into more windy areas and deeper waters. High Wind Scotland is testing the concept in a park configuration. In a year's time, or less than that, we will see five wind turbines towards the horizon. What we will not see will be the cables that will connect those wind turbines and bring the current that is produced into shore. All work on land is performed by Scottish company Balfour Betty. The five, six megawatt turbines can provide energy to 20,000 UK homes. The huge suction anchors securing the turbines to the seabed are also produced in Scotland. We're now looking at the 15 uh, suction anchors located here at, uh, and constructed here at uh, NIG Energy Park by a Global Energy Group. The sign is made by uh, Abel in Norway. They are five meters in uh, diameter. 16 meters tall. Approximate weight is uh, 111 tons. So it's uh, quite a big uh, amount of uh, steel going on board this uh, technique vessel. The literally huge difference between a bottom fixed turbine and the high wind turbine is the floating substructure. These were built by Navantia in Spain. The structure is over 90 meters long. Uh, the diameter, the biggest diameter is about 14.4 uh, meters uh, and uh, the weight is approximately 3,500 tons. The towers were also built in Spain by Navasa. This is one of the highways in Scotland Tower sections, length 20 meters and the diameter 6.5 meters. The turbines were assembled at Stord in Norway. One by one, the pieces of the high wind puzzle arrived. The turbine has grown from the 2.3 to 6 megawatts from the high-wind demo and everything else has to be upscaled. The final pieces to arrive at stored were the substructures. After the substructures are appended, they are ballasted with 5,000 tons of iron ore. On the field, each turbine is moored to three mooring lines connected to huge suction anchors in the seabed. The real brain of the hiving concept is the float motion controller developed by Stotal for a long time. It basically pitches the blades to reduce motion and stabilize the floater and increase the power production. In any project, and especially in a technology development project, there are challenges. Technology development and a tight project execution has been a challenge. We have 15 main contracts. Managing the interfaces between contractors has been a challenge. 
we also have some very special heavy lift operations. But the really challenging part of the project is to lift the fully assembled turbine onto the floating substructure. Over the next days, all the five turbines were mated and the preparation for sail away could start. And mid-July, the very first turbine was ready to be towed to Scotland. It's very exciting to be a part of a project like this, where we have a very new technology, the first in the world actually, uh, when it comes to the first floating wind farm ever. And uh, of course the heavy lifts were the first time, the mating is the first time, so of course it is very exciting to be part of it. When all five turbines have arrived at uh, the Scottish shelf, we will uh, connect them together into a grid, complete them, do all testing necessary, and we will uh, have a handover to operations this year. In August, all the five turbines were in place at Buchan Deep, off Peterhead. Uh, well, right now we are on this turbine here, uh, AGS-1, which was the last turbine to arrive from Sturit uh, two days ago. Well, to be the operations manager for the Hive in the Scotland the Pilot Park project is, is just amazing. And uh, we are working with, uh, with groundbreaking technology, uh, huge offshore structures. And I think it's safe to say that Statoil, uh, together with its contractors, are, are really pushing the borders of offshore wind technology here. Well, this is a, a pilot park with five turbines. The next step is, of course, to, to go bigger and into new areas. And it is also well worth uh, pointing out that we have a technology qualification program, which is a very important part of Hive in Scotland, uh, which will feed in research data into future projects. We have been able to cut the cost by 60 per megawatt from the Hyvin demo to the Hyvin Scotland pilot park. We will need subsidies for a while, but as the cost of energy has dropped for bottom fixed wind turbines, there are no reason why this should not be the same for floating wind turbine. I'm very proud and happy for a job well done with excellent HSC results and no serious incidents. We have faced many challenges through the project's execution, which has been solved with the contractors, our partner Mustard and the Scottish governments.